Greetings, I'm Taisha at Six Back with another great video. I'm joined by our favorite, our favorite brother, Willie Cartwright, author of From Save to Save, My Journey Away from Christianity and Is Christianity Detrimental to the African American Community? How are you doing today? I am awesome. How are you? I am hanging in there. Is it as windy in your area as it is here? Like I have houseplants falling out the window and I have no. the blinds moving as if this is this is a haunted house. No, nah, it was pretty windy um, the other day, but I think I'm I'm further, I'm in a good spot. We're mm -hmm. further north than you are, so you're getting the soon-to-be storm coming, but it's yes. like below Atlanta. So you you're below Atlanta. I'm I'm east. I'm just I guess I'm, I'm just east of Atlanta. Okay. Uh, so we're kind of in a nice isolated area. We don't get the storm from north and then the south kind of isolate us. So I'm good. It's pretty warm. It's about 80 degrees and it's the sun yes. is still out. It was so 87. It was yeah. 87. So shout out to everybody who's joining us tonight, who's joining us live. I see we have uh, Shalandria and we also have Will Cash Girl. Greetings to y'all and greetings to everyone that is going to join us later on or during the live stream, but also those who are go who are going to watch the replay. And if you were with us the week before last, we, we were talking about, you know, just debunking different things in the Bible according to science. Now, this this week, we're going to also hit on some science. We're going to also talk about, you know, historical fact. You know, a lot of people, you know, tend to use the Bible as like, okay, this is a real historic document, you know, and it's not, it's not, not that at all. And I learned a, a new term. It's not historical fact, it's just in, interpreted history, correct? Yeah, absolutely. Yep, yeah, absolutely. And I think that uh, this topic today is important because for one, uh, believers like to try to use, uh, they like to try to say that this is history, therefore it's true, therefore we should believe it. We should be believing it. Uh, that's number one. And then a second thing is that obviously it's not historical evidence. It's not historically accurate. It's not historically true. You know, I always see these memes with people saying, Notice if you go to a museum, you never see anything from the Bible in a museum because the museums are about things that are factual, real, real evidence. But I think the second thing, and I think more importantly than, than everything, is uh, religion is the only thing that we take of faith. Everything else we believe we require evidence of. And so you can't use the Bible as evidence of the Bible. That's called a circular argument. So I can't use the Bible to prove the Bible. So if mm -hmm. I'm going to believe this thing, then I need to see some corroborated, scientific, or archaeological, unbiased, non-biblical evidence of many of the things, what I always say, the major events or characters from the Bible. And I studied this, and I wrote about this in the book, and anytime I talk about this, I said there is zero to very little uh, actual corroborated archaeological historical evidence of any of the major events or major characters in the Bible. And we're going to touch on some of that, that stuff today as we go along. But I think it's important, you know, for us, I talk all the time about us being free thinkers, us being critical thinkers, and that goes for everything, every organization that you're a part of, every aspect of your life, and especially this thing we call religion, because it's so important. It has it plays such a huge role in our life. And for us just to go on and say, well, I believe because I believe in faith. Well, you can use that for everything. I can say I believe in the, in the spaghetti God because I take it on faith. You know, there's 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 as much evidence for the spaghetti God as it is for this, you know, Abrahamic God. You're right. So. Yeah. So we have to be careful and we really want to be critical thinkers and critical thought and, and really understand what we're doing. We need to sit back and analyze this. Okay, where is the where is the evidence for what I believe in and for what the Bible says? Um, and so I get into all kinds of discussions. And I think the people that I get in discussions with, the, the believers, they range from everything from those who say, I don't care what you're saying, everything about is true, yeah, mm -hmm. snakes talk, you know, donkeys fly. Mm -hmm. You know, God created the earth in six days, blah, 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 mm -hmm. all the way to the other end of the spectrum where people say, well, a lot of the Bible is metaphoric or is an analogy. Allegory, all that. Yeah, you know, allegory. So I get every argument everywhere in between. It's alchemy. Yeah, exactly. So it's important that we 
talk about what real evidence is out there for those of us who really want to be critical thinkers about this thing we call religion. And for those who are on with us live, please send us your questions and your comments. Uh, somebody said, I just purchased them. Thank you so much. Who is that? Um, I can't even read that. That is Pestilent Heretic. Yeah, okay. Thank you. I couldn't even say that. Thank you. I need to get more. <laughs> I need to get better glasses. Thank you so much. I really appreciate that. I really appreciate that. He said, I'm on page 50 and I had to force myself to stop. Uh, I'm in the money chapter. There you go. There yes. you go. Uh, really appreciate that. It's uh it's a it is a quick read. It's a it's an easy read, it's a quick read. Uh, I've had people who say that you know, usually it takes them a while to read a book, but they mm -hmm. get my book and they can't put it down and they get right. through with it and they love it. So I am really happy about that. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. Question for you, like, I, I I love how you said it was a circular argument, because at one point in time, I was like, you know what, the Bible is the only book that I need. And the Bible is the truth. It's the, <laughs> the living truth, the living word of God. I didn't want to read anything else that 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 challenged my 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 belief system. And there's there's different things I hear uh, some people say, like, they'll say, yes, I, you know, I, oh, well, let me think about this one. So yeah, they'll say like, yeah, I know that there's evidence of the big bang theory, but I still believe in the cr creation. You know, I still believe in that. It's like they're, they, 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 they just throttle the fence and don't want to challenge their thoughts. And another, you know, perspective I guess at times is when I say like, you know what, I, I, I left religion. I don't want, I'm, I'm out of organized religion. I don't want to want to read the Bible. I really don't. I'm kind of over it. I'm through with it. Then I'll get, you know, some people like, you know, they may identify as the Hebrew Israelites or, you know, <laughs> our, our brothers and sisters over there. And they'll say, read, read it again, because the Bible is the true history of black people's my sister. You know what? What do you have to say about that? When people say like, well, no, it's the true history of us. We need to read it and study it. It's the 12 tribes of us. Well, let's let's break this down so the, the the philosophy or theory with hebrew israelites and i have one of my best friends in the world grew up with high school buddy really close friend he's a he's a hebrew uh israelite also i think my wife cousin had this one too so the theory behind what they're talking about is this they believe that we're the original jews therefore we're the original people therefore we are in the condition that we are collectively as African Americans, because we strayed, we disobeyed God, and this is some kind of punishment, divine punishment from Him. So, if we look at the evidence, first of all, we understand that the original Jews, uh, the people that we see today, are not the original Jews. That I will 100% agree with I I Hebrew Israelites. Those are basically European Jews. There are two groups of of ba two major groups of European Jews that we see now. And I can't even, I forgot how to pronounce the name of both of them, but it's two, it's two groups. That's who we kind of see now. But the original Jews were obviously people of color and they were from the Northeast region of Africa. Remember, Northeast region of Africa. Mm -hmm. uh, all, almost all of our descendants, us here in, 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 in the United States, we descended, our ancestors from Africa were from West and Central Africa. That's factual. Uh, so to say, and then also if you look at the evidence and do the research, there is no DNA archeological evidence of any of us being descendants of any original people in that region. Um, so to say just because there were people of color that were the original Jews, Therefore, i.e., it must be us because we are no longer there. We're here. Also, you know, people, Hebrew Israelites read the Bible, they interpret certain things, you know, bondage, being a slave. And they ask questions, well, who else is that? That's us. It's got to be us because we're right. the ones. I mean, that's selective, subjective interpretation of scripture. Mm -hmm. um, so to say that we're the original Jews because of that region and because we're from Africa is like saying, uh, it's not even it's, it's even worse than this, but it's like saying, OK, there is a there are a group of people uh, in Mexico City. But my parents are from Ontario, Canada. So because it's the same continent, we right. all must be descendants of those people from Mexico City, Mexico. Right. 
So Africa is, 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 is you know, large, the second largest continent, depending on what you're looking at, land or, or people geographically. Uh, it's 50, there are 54 countries in Africa. There were so many different religions and spiritual practices done prior to the slave trade. For you to just drill down and say, okay, we all are descendants of the original Hebrew Israel, I mean, original uh, uh, Israelites, it's just, it's just crazy to me. Um, mm-hmm. You can't argue with them because they get, uh, they, get <laughs> they get hysterical. Kareem, uh, you know about that. The he, loud, he oh yeah, that. I, I, yeah, I've seen. It. They they think the louder they they talk, uh, they coming from the Bible. First of all, and and, and I, you have to tell people this: if you're not a believer, then telling me that what you what telling me what's in the Bible is factual means nothing to me. Because I don't believe that. It's just like yes. you tell it. It's like you being a, a lover of, of of Harry Potter, and you telling me, well, Harry Potter says I don't give a flying freak what Harry Potter says. Right. I don't believe that. So you telling me that this is in the Bible don't make it any truer for me to you know it it, it doesn't make it factual because right. you're saying it's from the Bible. So yeah, yes. so I um uh, so yeah, so that's one of those things that our people I mean, they they go in and they go they they yeah. they know the Bible inside and out and they do selective interpretation and all of that. So yeah, uh, we just have to be careful with that until they come up with with DNA proof showing that our people are descendants of the original Jews. Then I'll believe it. But until then, and they don't have any of that. They haven't had that. That's that information. That evidence does not exist. Wonderful. And when you say historical fact, um, in in your book, um, on page thirty, you you begin telling us about you know how this concept of Caesar Borgia was, you know, created. <laughs> and that's, to me, when, when when I think of history in the Bible, history and religion, that's that's the, the only date that comes to mind when this concept was created, this concept of white supremacy was, was created, and it was put into force and spread around around the world. You know, what, what do you have to say about that as far as, like, the Bible and timelines, mirroring that on actual you know, history and our, our and and time timeline of the world. Yeah, you know, first of all, you know, th- there are no actual dates in the Bible. You know, it's not. You know, this happened in, you know, thirty six A.D. There are there are historians that try to date stuff back based on what the Bible say because any like like every every piece of mythology has some real stuff to it. Right. So if the, if the Bible talks about Nero, Nero was a real person, but that doesn't make the Bible real. It's just like any other piece of mythology you read. It's going to be some even if you read something like Batman. Right. Gotham City. He talks about New York City or stuff happening in this city or that city or some time frame or whatever. So so that's the thing. So if you look at uh, let's start with the Council of Nicaea. And those of you familiar with the Council of Nicaea, the Council of Nicaea was a series of, it was one of four or five councils that took place in the 300s. Uh, the Council of Nicaea was 300, it was 325 AD. Constantine uh, basically uh, at the time was at war with another group or country or whatever. And he, he had a dream that he won the war, but on the front of the, the, the clothing that they were wearing, the warriors, it was a cross. So he took this to mean that everybody in Rome should become Christian. And at the time, there were many, many different religions. Uh, Christianity at the time was a small kind of cult, so to speak. So Constantine brought all of the bishops t- t- together. And in the Council of Nicaea, one of the things that they decided on, which I think is the, the, probably the most important thing, it was a number of things that they came to uh, grips with, but the most important thing that they all kind of decided on was, okay, where do, we, where do we place this Jesus? Do we say that he always existed? Do we say that he was just human and it died but did some miraculous stuff? Uh, or exactly, so where do we put him? So they all decided, not all, but the majority, because a couple of people dissented, but the majority say, well, let's make him part of the this trinity. Let's create this, this Godhead, God, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit. So that's where you get your trinity from. Um, and then later on, they started painting pictures using Caesar Borgio 
as the model. And that's how you get the white eyed, I mean, the blue eyed, blonde hair Jesus. But understanding the history of the council, uh, and it was, like I said, it was, it was four other councils, but the Council of Nicaea is important because of the Trinity and the, the, how we got Jesus and the Trinity. And so that's something that we all, you all, anybody out there who are Christians, you know, you should you should really research that. I think one of the things that's frustrating is that how little Christians go outside of the Bible to actually study the history of their religion, you know, where it came from, because it was pagan, all of the pagan uh, characteristics that's part of the religion, all of the, you know, things that was never really Christian, how they all became, how you got heaven and hell, where, where, where that stuff came from. I mean, it's so much out there, but a lot of times, most Christians just read the Bible, take it at face value and say, okay, this is what it is. And when there are questions, or shortcomings, they just don't don't ask the questions, or they're afraid to ask the questions. Or if they ask the questions, they get a you know not the right answer or a simple answer to kind of placate them, and they go on about their business. But uh, but you know, but that's something that's important when we talk about that. Um, and so, uh, are there any questions before I? We, we, do we have any questions here? Let's see. We have some comments. Um from Lynn, no one can argue that the Bible is the one book that can explain our current condition, our experience in slavery, even the problems that befall us as outlined in Deuteronomy 28. Uh, Lynn, I don't, I would, I would challenge you to show me proof that that's talking about us, African Americans uh, here in this country. I mean, I know you can read it and you, we can interpret it, you can interpret it, as being such, uh, so here's so here's the two questions that I have about that. If you're talking about us suffering for 400 years, here's my first question: If if we left or disobeyed God 2,000 years ago, why did our suffering start many, 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 many generations later? And why is it that? our ancestors who didn't actually do the leaving or forsaking God, but why is it that they're the ones that had to suffer? That's that's the first question. Also, when Christians talk about this suffering, it's supposed to be a 400-year period. Mm -hmm. So a lot of times they're judging from, okay, we came over here as slaves 1611. Uh, was it now? I mean, 1619. So basically, our suffering and everything should have been over in 2019. So we're in 2022 and we're still experiencing many of the same things that we've always experienced, especially um, in the last 10, 15, 20 years. So to you, Leah, that's two questions that I would ask you. Uh, why is it that many generations later, we're the ones, our ancestors are the ones who had to pay uh, and to suffer for what people 2,000 years prior to them did. You know, that doesn't make a whole lot of sense. And and, and explain to me this whole 40 years and why we're still going through what we're going through if it's supposed to only be, if it was supposed to only be 400 years. One thing that you, you also mentioned as well is like the characters of the Bible. Like, okay, in museums, you have evidence of things, you know, um, what is it? Uh, shoot, shoot, shoot. It just past my mind but we can date you know different things that that we find in in the earth and the crust the artifacts left behind based on the people that were here however as many things that that we found discovered in the ocean nothing pertaining to the bible has been found and it's it's not fact and that's one thing i used to see watching a show called unsolved mysteries every now and again you'll you'll see a segment where they say there's been um someone who claimed they found evidence of Noah's Ark and stuff like that. And it's like, no, it's not because it did not exist. Can, can you talk about that? How they're still pulling out, you know, kings and queens out, out of tombs in Egypt, but no one has found anybody mentioned from the Bible. Yeah. So here's the thing that we didn't understand. Um, the, Roman pe the Roman people of that time period, and especially the Egyptian people of that time period, kept meticulous records, right? There were no less than 200 historians in that region during Jesus' time, biblical time, right? Uh, there is zero, zero contemporaneous writings 
of Jesus and the things that happened during his resurrection, during the time he was here on earth. Zero. The Egyptians didn't write about it. The Romans, from a contemporary, from a, when I say contempor co contemporaneous, that means while it was going on. But yet they wrote about everything else. If you go uh, to Egypt, there is nothing in the tombs, in the caves, in any kind of writings about Jesus Christ. Absolutely zero, nothing, nothing whatsoever. So you got to tell me that a person who's supposed to be the greatest person to walk the face of this earth and did the things that Jesus supposedly did, uh, fed so many people, raised people from the dead, all of this stuff that no one wrote about it. Not, not, one, not, not one person during that time frame was sitting down and wrote about it. So what, what you do have that most Christians point to as non-biblical evidence of Jesus um, and other things. First of all, let's let's understand again that that there is no archaeological evidence of 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 the most important events in the Bible. Before we get to the people, before we get to the characters, let's address the events. There is zero evidence of the most important events in the Bible. So let's, i.e., let's begin with uh, the Exodus story. There is zero. If you go to Egypt and you look at the cave, the writings, there is zero writings about an exodus. And remember, the Bible says there was about 600,000 people that exited uh, Egypt at that time. If you add, that's just soldiers. If you add wives and kids, it's easily 1.2 million or whatever. Egypt at the time probably had somewhere around two to three million people. So you're talking about a third to a half of the people uh, in that region leaving. And you mean to tell me that no one wrote, it was not written about anywhere? Secondly, there is scientists and historians have studied the bottom of the Red Sea. There is absolutely zero evidence of anything re resembling what would have occurred during the Exodus story in the bottom of the Red Sea. Same thing for Noah's Ark, uh, all of this stuff. So now we get to the, the uh, characters. So when Christians talk about non-biblical evidence for Jesus Christ, for example, uh, they usually cite two people, Tacticus and um, um, Josephus, right? Neither one of these individuals lived during the time that Jesus lived. That's the first thing. Let's get that straight. Josephus was born in 37 AD, which would have been four years after Jesus supposedly died, right? Uh, Tacticus was born in 55 AD. So even in their writings, the earliest writings from, from Josephus about Jesus was in somewhere in 90, 92 AD. So you're talking almost 60 years after Jesus supposedly died. And so the information that he got was hearsay from somebody else, from somebody else. And he only mentioned, he only wrote about Jesus twice in all of his writings. The first one was he mentioned James, who was supposed to be Jesus' brother, blah, blah, blah. Most historians say that that writing is, is authentic, not the facts about it, but that the writing that it was Josephus who wrote what he wrote. But the second writing is, is, is a lot longer. He talks about Jesus and Christians or whatever. A lot of historians believe that that is fraudulent. So there's conflict about that. Tacticus, again, born. You know, 20 some years after Jesus was born, wrote about uh, Jesus in relationship with Nero and some other stuff. Again, no firsthand writings, no firsthand knowledge. There is nothing from the apostles or anybody that actually walked, supposedly walked with Jesus. You got to tell me if I'm walking with the greatest person to ever live on this earth and I see this person doing all kinds of things, you mean to tell me I'm not going to sit down and write this down somewhere? I just saw this man walk on water. No, I just saw this man raise someone from the dead. So we have to think about that. And then finally, let's look at the uh, crucifixion and the resurrection of Jesus and what supposedly had happened. So we do understand that according to the Bible, um, I think uh, there were supposed to be earthquakes uh, when Jesus died, right? Or was it when he, when he was resurrected? One or the other. It's supposed to be, first of all, it was three hours of darkness in the middle of the day. There is nowhere else, nowhere where that's recorded in actual history in, in, from any uh, country or civilization or whatever. No one wrote about that. There were supposed to have been earthquakes uh, during that time period. No other, there was, there was no writing, no historical evidence of that ever happening. 
uh, during that particular time. And then the final thing, which I think is also probably the most unbelievable, is that um, people got up out of the grave and walked around. So you had a bunch of walking dead from these people who was raised out of their graves, who was supposed to go into heaven with Jesus uh, uh, ascending into heaven. Now you mean to tell me that if 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 someone saw that, they wrote about everything else, even minute, unimportant stuff that someone didn't say, you know what, I cannot believe what just happened. I just saw people getting up out of the grave and ascending to, to heaven. So we don't have, we have zero, again, we have zero proof of, of these events happening. And again, I ask people, do your research, look at this stuff. And tell me, does this stuff really make sense? And we don't have uh, any information, any 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 proof of these things. Uh, Papa Soul Searcher, believers will ask softball questions to another believer, hoping to get talked out of the question that they asked. <laughs> it, it, it is, it is, um, it, when you begin with confirmation bias, meaning that you've already predetermined what you believe, and you're just looking for anything to confirm your belief, you will take anything and twist it so that it makes sense to you so that it confirms your belief. But when you begin with the end in mind, saying, okay, you, you already begin beginning the research, so to speak, believing that this God or this Jesus exists. So, so, so it's already flawed. So mm -hmm. now you're searching for things to confirm what you already believe. And, and so when I get into a discussion with people about science versus religion, they say, well, science do the same thing. I said, no, no. Science begins with a blank slate and they take all of the evidence and they, they go where the evidence leads. Unlike religion begins with, okay, this is what we believe. So let's mm -hmm. find the evidence to support what we believe. And if the evidence don't, doesn't necessarily fit, let's find a way to make it fit. Right. So, yeah. Uh, Will Cash Girl, he mentioned um, someone named Walter Williams. Are you f familiar with that? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay. That is new to me. So um, I, I found a playlist on YouTube where he says, um, like Walter Williams says, exactly no bones or anything in the dominant society, key records of everything they find and no evidence at all. He's absolutely right. It's, it's nothing. I mean, not only not only are we talking about Jesus, we're talking about Abraham, mm -hmm. we're talking about Moses. I mean, if you if you if you talk to rabbis. Um, they would tell you that that Moses was a fictional character. They tell you right that, and, and so, you know, Christianity is actually an offshoot of Judaism. You know that without Judaism, it would be no Christianity. You know, uh, so I mean, Jesus supposedly, if he lived, he was Jewish. So how are you going to tell people who 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 started this that they don't know what they're talking about because you came along, Johnny come lately and created kind of your own thing, right? So we were, uh, what's the other question? We have, um, <laughs> I most, like, go ahead. I know, go right here. I'm not sure which one you're reading. No, but, I'm uh, looking at the one right before Will. He said, when will, when will man allow this, this, his God to speak for it, for himself? Bro, I, I said this, I said this all the time. I ask yes. him all the time. They get it. They get defensive. They want to fight with me. They want to argue with me. I said, listen, as somebody asked me the other day, they mm -hmm. said, what would it take? For you to be a believer, what would God have to do to make you be a believer? I say, you know what? If your God is everything that you believe He is, He would know what it would take to make me a believer. So, you know, stop defending, stop fighting this battle for your right. God and let your God speak. So, yeah, so I, I agree. And what was the next one? I think he was going to say, well, um, you had, jump. yeah, I jumped one? somewhere. I forgot. Was it? I think it was Will. I think it was the next one right up under that. Most people. Is that most people don't uh, leave their religion? Square. There we go. This one. Yeah. Yeah. It's um. Will I? I think. And, and, and this is. I. This is me. I don't want to make excuses for it, but I think what happens is that when we are when we're when we're indoctrinated into this faith and religion, it becomes very comfortable. It becomes very comfortable for us. Uh, we we don't have to be accountable. We blame everything on on the devil. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it keeps us humble and docile because we give God, this God, this external God, all the credit for everything that happens in our life that's good. But then He gets none of the blame. Uh, right. But it's, but it's, it's, but it's really uncomfortable to scratch beneath the surface. It's really uncomfortable to ask the questions because that will throw a person's entire life off. Because remember, most people who are really devout to religious, you know, devout Christians or whatever, everything that they do, their entire life 
is built around this 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 belief system. You so going back, I think somebody said earlier, and I think Taisha might have been you. We talked about it earlier. When people talk about uh, evolution and creation, now now evolution is a is a worldwide accepted, most plausible theory as to how we got here. Ev evolution, uh, natural selection. It is it is what's taught in science books. Is what's taught in all the universities and colleges and most high schools, right? Mm -hmm. um, but and I think a lot of Christians they look at it and say, you know, it doesn't make sense. This whole created in six days, the whole creation story. And besides, there are there are just there are um, there are issues with the story. I mean, the creation story is written at least twice in Genesis, and if you read both versions side by side, there are some discretions. As mm -hmm. to what happened on this day, what happened on this day. So that in itself is a problem. But 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 Christians have a hard time believing because here's the thing: if they concede that evolution is right and not creation, uh, then you start tearing down the foundation of their belief system. Because remember, without creation, you don't get the original sin. And without the original sin, you don't get a need for Jesus Christ. And if you don't have a need for Jesus Christ, then you don't have a virgin mm -hmm. birth. Uh, uh, a crucifixion as a res and a resurrection, and we wouldn't be celebrating Easter in, in, in a few weeks. So, so that's going to be a good program. We got, we got, we're gonna, yeah, we're going to talk about that. Good in store. Yeah. <laughs> so you start pulling back the onion. You start peeling back the onion. It's okay. Well, if I can see this as not being factual, then this is going to tear down this, and this is going to tear down this. So a lot of them stay. Um, so a lot of them say, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to believe uh, 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 evolution is a stick with creation. And then you have those who say, okay, I'll concede, but they fix it to where God is still responsible for evolution, mm -hmm. right? Uh, you know, and so they find all kinds of ways to twist and turn it, uh, you know, all, all which way. So, you know, it just depends. But again, it's really about people doing their research, especially researching outside of the Bible. Uh, understanding, you know, there are plenty of books out there that tell you that 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 gives you a non-biased story of how religion came to be, and especially including Christianity. I mean, it's non-biased; it's just straight straight down the middle. This is what happened. This is how we got to where we are now with religion, and people won't even read the basic stuff. What else we got here? Um, Lynn had brought up. I, I had asked Lynn um, if she could present like like which scriptures which book she's referencing says so, some things in the bible may may be meant to may meant to be interpreted metaphorically however the proof of who we are is smack dab in the bible so i just ask where i think that we talked talked about that already but it's like okay exactly where yeah and so i see another comment from listen some things in the bible may yes. be meant to be interpreted metaphorically. However, the proof of who we are is smack dab in the Bible. Okay, again, as Taisha just said, where's the proof? And so let me go back before we even ask that. If you can see that some things in the Bible are meant to be metaphorical, what are those things that you believe are meant to be metaphorical? And how do you make that determination? And how far do you go? And where do you stop? Exactly, because right. like with with certain things, there's a disclaimer, you know, it's a disclaimer, like, you know, this is based on a true story. This is, you know, um, taken from or, or, or in, inspired by actual events or this right here. Do not attempt at home. So it's like, OK, where's the disclaimers that, that tell us this? And there's 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 none. It's like it's left up to your imagination. The key word is believe. Like if you can believe it, you can create it and run wild with it. And it's not, it's like, okay, if you're going to apply it to yourself, if the book of Ruth applies to you, you know, if I'm sorry, if the, if the story of Ruth applies to you, then go ahead. If Malachi, if you identify with that, that's on you, but it's like, you know, that's not my belief. That's not blink. It's not what it was supposed to do. But if you're inspired by that story, if you're inspired by it, that's, that's all you, but it does, doesn't apply. It's not fact. It's so not let me, a, let me answer a couple of questions that, that, that Lynn, that Lynn has committed. Um, let me start with the second one first. She say, uh, it says in Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy 28, <laughs> 28 40, 40, 48, we will serve our enemies for every want and need what other people is this. We're not the only people to be enslaved in the world, in the history of the world. We're not the only people, you know. So that 
that doesn't make a lot of sense. We're not the only people to serve other people. We're not the only people to be enslaved. We're not the only ethnicity. We're not the only racial group. We're not the only nationality. We're not the only group of people to be enslaved. All right. It's the first thing. So going back to the other comment, you uh, and I think I got to go back up. Uh, let's see, can I go back up? You had mentioned. You this said, uh, yeah. Who else is going around hating, hating their own seeds? Women afflicted with ball scabs, diabetes, heart disease, sickle cell. You know, we're you know, black people are not the only people that get these diseases. Mm -mm. You know that we're not the only people that hate our own at times. You know, white white men to to a certain effect don't like white women. They yeah, that's cut, what, like here that's in where this you country, get misogyny they... from. Where you think you get misogyny from? They 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 disrespect their women. They don't like their women. If you go to other countries like India, India has the same problem. There are there are countries in the Middle East where where men hate their women and um and hate their their own seeds. You go to China, China at one point where they were killing uh, their babies if they had too many kids. And it was like is, in Rome, right, where, you know, they did not like the women because once they, they got pleasure from her, they had another mouth to feed. So that's why, yeah. you know, these other forms of satisfying themselves came about. And exactly. now we have laws protecting uh, yeah. laws against it now. <laughs> exactly. So, you know, uh, uh, we're not, black people are the only people that get diabetes, they don't get heart disease. You know, I can ask the same thing about uh, Watch black my people. Pound life. Yeah, black people rarely get skin cancer, right? That's a that's a kind of a, 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 a European thing. So why isn't that some kind of affliction? We don't get, you know, we don't get that. So I think what, what we do is, again, and I think Lynn is an example of doing this, we begin with a, a a bias in mind. We already we already believe what we believe, and so we go looking through the Bible or whatever it is, and we say, "Oh, oh yeah, this fits the narrative. You know, this must mean this." And um, and, and Lee, it's not. I, 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 let me let me let me. I thank you for being on here. Thank yeah, you I was typing this. I'm like, thank you, Lee, because, for your interaction. Like, we're not coming into a yeah, gloves. No, no. Like, we thank you because this this is the questions that we get. Yeah. Challenges, so thank you. And it helps all of us to Land learn. Land is because, saying what maybe somebody is too afraid to type. So thank you. <laughs> yep. And I think that we've all had these kind of questions. Even when I was a believer, I, I read this and kind of thought the same thing at at at, at, uh, at times. And so I think we just have to be careful. And I think we have to kind of again peel back the onion and say, okay, let's kind of look at this piece by piece. Mm -hmm. We're not the only people that ever been enslaved. We're not the only people that suffer from certain diseases. We're not the only people that hate our seeds. We're not the only people that mistreat our women or that hate our women. And again, this is not everybody. This is just a generalized statement. Uh, there is a culture, there is a worldwide culture of misogyny and mistreatment of women that we've always had on this planet from day one. You know, uh, there were, if you go to, I went to Lima, uh, Peru, um, early 2020, right before the um, COVID started. And we did a tour and it was telling us about uh, the people there and the culture, you know, many, many centuries ago, how they would do child sacrifices. The child sacrifices has been a part of every culture. So again, not loving your seed, you know, we don't, as African-Americans, we don't sacrifice our kids. We might talk mean to them, we might beat them, but I'm telling you of cultures that, are, that don't look like us, that have literally sacrificed their kids literally put their kids on the altar and kill their kids. Mm -hmm. So that's not something, you know, we, we, we're, we're actually, we're actually far from that. So, so again, let's not, you know, let's go into the Bible kind of with an open mind, get the information and then let's do the research. Will said in Rome, in Rome, they didn't like women. Yep. I, Ta Taisha just, just talked about that. Um, just because there are some similarities between the stories in the Bible and black people doesn't, doesn't show correlation. Kareem, absolutely. Um, there's a Lynn, there's a book, there's a couple of books I would recommend for you to take a look at. Uh, one is called the uh, The Cross and the Lynching Tree. And then the other one is called God of the Oppressed. And what it talks about is African Americans' desire to be affiliated with the suffering that occurred in the Bible and Jesus Christ, because we feel like it makes us closer to Jesus. And so that's that's some psychological stuff. That's some unconscious stuff that we kind of go through. So 
I'm not saying this is you, Lynn, but I've, I, 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 I don't want to say, but this is, this is, I don't, I'm not saying this is you, Lynn. I've met people who, including people in my family, my mother for one, who, who really subconsciously and sometimes, you know, consciously wanted to suffer because they felt like the more they suffered, mm -hmm. the closer it brought them to Jesus or right. the more they felt worthy of going to heaven. And that's within our community. So you take that and you look at stuff in the Bible. He's oh, yeah, that's us. That's us. We're we're those people. We're suffering. We're supposed to be suffering because we're God chosen people and blah, blah, blah. It's almost kind of like we talked about when we first started about the Hebrew Israelites. We want to be part of that, that so-called suffering so much because I feel like it makes us closer to God and really part of that chosen people. Mm -hmm. uh, next coming away, I have a question for Lynn. Leah, do you feel like our suffering is biblical? Do you feel we're God's chosen people and we're meant to suffer on earth to be closer to him? I love this question. I love this question because what I always ask is, is this. If we are God's chosen people and it is divine suffering that we're enduring, why in the hell would we serve this God? Because here's the thing. We've done no different. We've done no worse than other cultures. You got to tell me that God is going to make us suffer, the people who have been oppressed, but yet not make the oppressor suffer? Mm -hmm. It's like, who, who does this to their kids? Right. It's like, me, it's like me looking at my kid and then going across the street and get another kid and taking that kid to Chuck and Cheese or whatever, but then looking at my kid and slapping my kid in the face and beat my kid, but this supposed to be my kid, so why would, why would we worship a God that's going to make us suffer? You know, that's going to sit there and watch us go through slavery and Jim Crow and, mm -hmm. and segregation, everything that we're going through now, police brutality and poverty and all the other stuff. Why would I worship a God like that? If I'm supposed to be, I would, listen, I, I, I would never, and I don't have any kids. I have a niece and a nephew and seven God kids between my, my wife and I. I would never treat them the way that this God is supposedly treating us if we're his people. And I don't know any parent that would, not any same parent. So that means I must be more moral than your God. Because where's the logic? Where's mm -hmm. the logic? It, 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 you know, and also, why is it that we're we're paying for the so-called sins of, of, of many, 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 many generations before us? Uh, we're not doing anything any worse than anybody else. So why why is it, why are we suffering supposedly more so than, than any other group? That doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me. That's a perfect question. Lee, if you have an answer, I, I would love to hear it and we can discuss it. That's one thing that I've heard a lot too. Like uh, when I was about, you know, a preteen and, you know, when my mom and I, I hear other older women talk, talk, talking about, you know, womanhood and, you know, having their first cycle and stuff like that. And they like, well, you know, God cursed Eve and we got the curse. You got the curse. And it's, it just programs like, okay. I'm cursed and to hate yourself. And what did I do wrong? Like, a, there's a movie called Mermaids. It has a Cher, Winona Ryder, and I think Christina Ricci in it. And um, and religion, belief systems, it made Winona Ryder crazy. <laughs> That's that's one thing that I remember about that movie. I'm like, damn, it really drove her wild. It drove her crazy. If it, and let me know if you saw the movie Mermaids and uh and uh, let me know about that. One thing that's funny is uh, right here, you can't reference the Bible at all in college essays. You will fail with a big ass F, <laughs> and that is so true. I went to a Catholic university. I did, and at first when I thought like I just needed the Bible because you had to take these religious courses i'm like oh, crap and i was like okay i have i have my bible i'm not buying the textbooks i'm not doing any of that it got so bad and i was embarrassing myself so bad on the group discussion chats i had to withdraw and something happened i pushed those classes toward the end of, of my degree but when i came back that in the middle of that i left religion i i, I left you know that belief system and i talk about this all the time that's when i made the dean's list you know, it's like you you can't you can't do that. It's like I don't know. It's just like as as you were saying, those those circular arguments. That's that's not it. You have you have to challenge it and come up out of there. Like so, if I couldn't use the Bible at a Catholic university in religious courses, it doesn't apply to real life. 
Yeah, I, I I talk about it in the Bible. What I mean in my in my book, one of the things I talk about is um, well, I talk about uh, how religion is detrimental to us, and then in a small section I talk about um, education. And I said, you know, because our kids, African American kids, primarily come from religious households, um, we our point of reference is always the Bible. And until we're taught differently, we we take that into life as an adult and say that okay, the Bible is real. It's mm -hmm. it, you know, it's we believe that. But if we're going to if we're going to be competitive on the world stage, then as as you just said, Taisha, and I think somebody else mentioned, um, we our point of reference uh, for education uh, things cannot be the Bible. You know, we cannot go into a world stage and compete with other young people mm -hmm. across the world. And have the Bible be our reference. We talk about right. geography. We talk about history. You know that we will get laughed off the stage. We, you 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 won't get a degree. You won't get into a school. You won't get into a class uh, because that's not what's commonly accepted. What's commonly accepted is the science of it all. Mm -hmm. So again, you know, we talk about that kind of stuff. We have to be careful because we want to be competitive. I want our kids to be competitive on the world right. stage. You don't want your child sound like a fool the world stage competing. Let's say your kid is trying to, is, let's say your kid is in a really good college or university. Um, one that is, that is, you know, I'm not gonna say the word secular, but not a religious affiliated university or college. And they're taking a subject, whatever the subject is, uh, and their point of reference is the Bible for everything. Mm -hmm. They'll get laughed out of the classroom. I watched a show, it came on Lifetime a, a couple of years ago. I was, I was still in Hawaii around like, 2014 about 2016 it was called child genius uh -huh. and it was like small children they were they could spell words backwards and forwards missing letters doing you know the most complicated math you know i've ever seen in my life just brains just working just like that but then when you look at you know our children most of the time they're 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 in, i mean i'm pretty sure you know faith you know is a, a foundation of people's lives but we put too much praise on that you know we'll we'll share videos of our children and the lord said i'm laying hands on you you know i'm bless you but these children are are, are, are up here brainiacs geniuses you know i'm like yeah there's there's definitely something not yep. not right in there you know we're we're not setting them up for a success you know when you, when you look at the televangelist and all that you know they're there because it's a business they're getting money and it's nothing that makes you look better than anyone else except you are a face selling a product that's invisible that's renewable time and time again yeah i want to uh lynn again thank you so much because I, I i we need more people like you to come mm -hmm. on here and, and and give us your side and challenge all of us. Uh, I I love this comment here. You said no. I don't believe our suffering is meant to be to uh, is meant to be. I don't believe our suffering is meant to be to draw us. It just is what it is. I, I thought that and correct me if I'm wrong. I thought you were saying that you believe that our suffering is meant to draw us. Um, uh, I guess I'm, I'm assuming you're saying draw us closer to God. Um, and so my my response would be twofold. First is, um, if this all-powerful, all-knowing God, couldn't he find a different way to draw us close to him without us going through the suffering that we're going through? Uh, secondly, uh, we are historically the most religious and the most spiritual people on the face of the earth. In our, if, you track, if you trace our history and you go back, there was a time in our history where I dare say 98% of our people were Christians, believers. What was going on during that period of time? We were enslaved. It was segregation. It was Jim Crow. So, so it, 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 if, if it was meant to draw us, we were already <laughs> as close as you're going to get to being to God as a collective group than any other group on the face of the earth. But yet, your God still still see purpose in our suffering. If if this is what you believe, and people who believe what you believe, it doesn't make a whole lot of sense sense to me at all whatsoever. What it is, I think, um, and again, this is not slight to you. What it is, though, I think, is is us making an excuse for our collective conditioning. Not only making an excuse, but coming to acceptance of it. 
and twisting it to where it becomes something favorable. You know, so, so the one thing that black people have always done is that we've always taken something that is meant to be bad or negative for us and twisted it and made it good for us. Mm -hmm. Language. There's the actually a world. song, a gospel song yeah. saying everything God, yeah. everything the devil did, God turned around for my good or something like that. Yep. Ex exactly. So so this is this is no different. We've taken our collective condition over the last 400 years or whatever, and we twisted it and say, well, this is good. This is this is meant to be because it's what God wants to do or it's divinely inspired or it's something from God. Even to the point where you hear people, especially older people, I don't hear a lot of young people, but older people will say, if it wasn't for slavery, we wouldn't have Jesus. If And, 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 and listen, I don't, I'm not, <laughs> I'm not Will Smith, so I, I don't slap people, at least not, not since I've been an adult. But when I hear someone say that, I, it makes me want to just slap them. Because that is, to me, the absolute dumbest thing that a black person can say regarding slavery and religion. I think it is the absolute dumbest thing that can be said. Uh, so, yeah, but again, thank you so much for your comments. Uh, I see the other ones. Uh, do we have... Who else? We got other people. One thing I wanted to uh, point out, uh, I think I have an assignment. Y'all know I love when I'm, I'm assigned movies to watch. And I have a movie. Um, speaking of that, I, I want to go live tomorrow. Please don't hold me to it if the storm is not that bad. But I want to go live pretty soon. I want to talk about this, this movie called Surviving the Game. Okay. Go check that out. To if you haven't seen it, check it out. Surviving the Game. Surviving it has Ice-T. It has a, a Ice-T, Charles Dutton. And a few other people I don't quite remember that. I think, I think Gary Busey's in it. But yes, okay. it's, it's an older mm -hmm. film, Surviving the Game. Watch that, and you'll be right in time for what I'm going to talk about. I think I'll do it Saturday. If not, I'll do it over the weekend. I hold myself to it, okay? But yes, yeah, Surviving the Game. But uh, the aunt said there's a 2001 movie called The Body. It's a movie about the resurrection. I got to take a look place. at that, uh, the aunt. Thank you so much. I got to take a yes. look at that. And I love the name, by the way, the aunt. Uh, yeah. yeah, I got the body 2001. Got to take a look at that. Uh, Lou, Lou, to you, appreciate the comments. Uh, appreciate the comments. Thank you so much. Thank all of you guys. Yes, uh, thank you. Hide the sky is only promoted to the U.S. Everyone else get get theirs today, here and now. You know, that's another thing. I, it, you know, again, we have to think critical about things. Um, we're the only people that's not getting hours you know mm -hmm. we're the only people that's told wait until you die you're gonna get mm -hmm. you to heaven or at least we're the only people that believe that again did that becomes a justification for our collective failure because what we're saying is that you know so we and, and this is why this is dangerous when when we when we when our young people start believing this then they stop trying to be successful if you tell someone that this is your, or you imply that this is your lot in life, and you still like accept this because this is what, this is the, this is your divine uh, mission in life to be in the condition that you're in, then people who are devout believers will stop trying to be better, stop trying to do better because they believe this is somehow divinely orchestrated by God, and so we stop. So this is this is extremely dangerous. For our kids to believe that this is how we're supposed to be, this is who we are, because the Bible says this is what we're supposed to be. It is it is dangerous. It is dangerous to our society. It is dangerous to our community. It is dangerous to our kids. Is one of the things is it, it it is the reason when people ask me why do I do what I'm doing, and they say, well, let people believe the way they want to believe. No, this stuff hurts us. This this stuff affects our mind. Our mind controls everything else. If we begin with a limited mind, we be, if we begin with a mind that says, I'm oppressed because God says I should be oppressed, and so I should accept it. I'm not saying we're saying that you know, out loud, but we're saying it subconsciously in our mind and through our actions and through our belief system. It stymies us as a community. It stymies us. It stops our kids. And so oftentimes, notice how many of our kids, young kids, are moving away from the traditional religions of their mothers and grandmothers and fathers and grandfathers, because that's part of it. They don't like, they're not going to accept being comfortable mm -hmm. in suffering and struggling. They will not accept that. You know why? Because they go to school with kids who don't look like them that has, they got everything. Yeah. And they're asking themselves, why do I have that? And they're not going to accept 
us telling our kids that this is from God or this is the position we're in because we're we're suffering because we didn't we walked away. Whatever the reason, whatever the excuses that we give, uh, our kids are not accepting that. A bravo to them. I'm glad that they're not. Yes, that's one thing I said as well. Um, and like as as some businesses, they're open on Sundays when the majority of us are, are are in church. We shut our business down because of the Lord. They know they got their doors yep. open, making money. Shout out to um, per, pestilent her, heretic. Um, I was surprised to learn that gospel music started here in Georgia. Yes, make sure if you haven't watched it, go go check out uh, our video on uh, on on the worst gospel songs ever. Yeah, we gave yeah, a history a ago, on, yeah. on gospel music and where it came from, moving up, and also to another channel. Check out um Professor Black Truth. Uh, if you haven't watched his his moment of truth, his daily upload today, I was listening to that as I was driving, and he was speaking about you know how jazz music in new orleans i was I, I was just there actually i wore this this shirt in new orleans but i was surprised so i'm like hold on and this is a sidebar real quick you know i'm like how come here in new orleans i'm walking around there's very limited mention of some of my favorite jazz musicians jazz would not be jazz without them the marsalis brothers they're from new orleans i'm like i didn't see anything yeah. you know we, we, we took a walk over to uh, Louis Armstrong Park. There was a statue for him. There was a statue for Mahalia Jackson. But I'm like, I haven't seen anything for the Marcellus brothers. And they are alive and well, the kindest men you will ever meet. You know, I'm like, wow, this is crazy. And when I learned today about the racist roots of, you know, j jazz and, and how it was suppressed in New Orleans of all places, it's like, wow, okay. So yeah, like I said, go, go check out, out that video. Um, what else do we have? Lynn, um, also she, she said she appreciates the, the dialogue as well. And I, I think Lynn to, to get her response and questions in real time. Could you email us, email me, um, um, at Taisha at info at Taisha com, or you go to Taisha com and just fill out the contact form or how can she contact you? Because this, this would be great to get, to get like live questions right there back and forth yep. versus, you know, the delay with comments and stuff like that. Let me address this because I think this is uh -huh. just extremely important. Uh, her, her comment. Lynn, Lynn says it was a result of our ancestors worshiping other gods, breaking the laws of of, the, of God. So that's what you believe is why we're in the condition that that we're in. So understand. Okay, so let's let's go back. Uh, we are when I say we African Africans, we're the original people. Of the planet, right? Uh, Christianity is roughly three thousand years old. Uh, there were many, many other religions prior to Christianity. There were many, many, many other spiritual practices prior to Christianity. Um, you, when people say what you just said. Uh, it is a result of not understanding, not reading, not understanding the history of religion. Europeans took everything that we practice in Africa and told us that it was bad and that it was wrong. Even voodoo, which we call, which some people call voodoo, but voodoo, uh, I sat through a, a, a presentation about mm -hmm. uh, voodoo from a historian, um, and they talked about it. I already knew some of the stuff, but they talked about it. Uh, voodoo is not anything that that we think it is, that most of us think it is. Mm -hmm. It's not demonic. It's not bad. It's not evil. Um, the first thing that they did to us, Lynn, and Lynn's comment is an example of that, is that they, being Europeans, told us, our ancestors in Africa, that everything that we were doing was bad, was mm -hmm. wrong, was evil, and was demonic. That's the first thing that they did. And so, um, Lynn, I challenge you to read more books about our history. Uh, the Book of the Dead is a good one. Uh, I, here, here's my, my only caveat about the Book of the Dead is that me personally, I think that it's kind of a hard read. I think it's kind of, um, I think it's kind of advanced for someone who's just now getting into let me understand more about the history of my ancestors and our work, our our spirituality, and all of that. Uh, it is a great book, but what you will find is you will see where everything came from us mm -hmm. uh, spiritually, and, and, and so uh, from that standpoint. So that is a great book. Um, 
the oppress uh yeah uh god of the oppressed and yeah the cross of the religion tree two two really good books let's not let's be careful in dismissing and downplay our ancestors and mm -hmm. what they did and what they practice in their spirituality everything that christianity had came from other religions including what our ancestors practice right everything there is nothing in the bible in christianity that is original there is nothing all right so we have to understand that and so things came from things came from in christianity came from other other practices uh, and so we have to understand that. So before we dismiss and say that we're being punished because we we left, we left. Uh, we, how long did we exist prior to the slave trade? You know, the earliest human, the earliest, the earliest modern human beings are anywhere from two hundred to three hundred thousand years old. So we existed in our own world, doing our own practice, our own spiritual practices, working with nature, whatever our people across the continent practice long before this concept of the Abrahamic God and Jesus Christ came along and we had no issues, right? So if you want to say that we're suffering because we walked away from God, you can easily reverse that and say, we may be suffering because we decided to believe in this God. Because prior to that, we were fine. And, and don't let Europeans and other people tell you that, that we were, you know, not civilized and the oldest school on the planet oldest university is in africa mm -hmm. <laughs> we taught all we taught plato and socrates and all those people what they know they came and learned from from africans mathematics we taught europeans how to bathe we taught them how to clean themselves yeah <laughs> we taught them all that stuff so so um uh i'm sorry i'm reading what the author is right i'm reading a book called the Historical Origins of Christianity by Dr. Walter Williams. Good, good deal. And I would love to hear you come, have you come back and tell us, tell us about it. Absolutely. Uh, absolutely. But yeah, so, so again, we do this uh, again, Lynn, thank you for your side. Please join us every week. Cause I, we need to hear the other side. Yes. Uh, that's how we grow. That's how we learn. Uh, I'm not saying that I'm right about everything. Um, I'm not saying that you're wrong about everything. Uh, I think that's we can learn to something that we can learn from uh, each other. My only my only caveat to that is that I like for all of us uh, to read. And if we already read it, let's read more. Let's have an open mind. Let's really dig deep into our culture and where we came from, um, you know, what our ancestors practice and, and, and all of that before we kind of make these statements and kind of take Christianity for, for the, the all to be all, which right. it really isn't. But that, that's what we tend to do. Here. And but we yeah. definitely welcome y'all. If y'all have topics, if you have questions, you know, that you want us to, you know, uh form a video around it, that that'd be great too. Because what, what we're doing is just you know coming from Willie's book and also from some notes that I had and some things we'll, we'll see on, on social media. And if you want um like your quick vi videos to discussing certain topics, you're also on TikTok. So can, can you tell us about your book and as well as um, your other so social media platforms, what you do as Mr. Save to Sane? Okay, let me, before I say this, I I, am, I, I love Lynn. I don't, I don't know Lynn. I love Lynn like a sister. <laughs> Lynn said, I'm going to read Lynn some left more. about seven, Lynn, seven she years said, ago. Yep. So yeah, so... She said, "I'm going to read some more. If 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 nothing else comes out of any of this, share with us. All too. of us is that we read more, mm -hmm. myself included. And talk so talk I, to each other because that's that's a great thing. We up. talk to each other. We 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 don't like condemn you to hell and cuss you out and <laughs> wish bad things on you. It's like, yeah, let's you know, let's break out of what we've been just just in. And this is a good place because many of us don't get to talk to people. Like, I don't get to, like, I think the most I've talked this whole week has been in, in this broadcast. So <laughs> I think I need y'all. So yes, you're you're definitely yeah. welcome. Lynn, I welcome you. If you could uh, send me an email and um, I'll see about getting you on so that you can ask questions like in, in, in real time. And then also, if you want to join Brother Willie, I know he's going to also have some some live streams on his channel as well, which is Safe to Saints. So you can, yep. you know, talk one on one on one with him because he's he's great. He welcomes the question. So that's that is your, your best bet. Well, it, it only makes you better. And so, uh, yeah, so my 
my channel is from Save to Sane, uh, Save the number two Sane on YouTube. Uh, where else um, can you follow me? Uh, the other stuff, uh, TikTok is, I think, is, well, Instagram, I got to get this stuff right, right? I do know no my work. YouTube page, um, but my TikTok is, I think, is, is well, Instagram is Willie Cartwright 1906. Uh, and I post a lot of uh, memes about religion on that. Facebook is WC O'Neill, uh, WC and then O N E A L. Um, so I think, yeah, so I think that's all. But uh, definitely follow me, the, the YouTube channel. Um, if you want to reach out to me, you can reach out to me. You can leave a comment. Uh, I look at all the comments. We read all the comments. We get the comments. Uh, even if you catch me on Facebook, you can send me a message or a message or through Instagram or whatever. But yeah, we're doing this. Uh, much appreciation to Sister Taisha for what she's doing. Taisha, she's a jack of all trades. She talks about many, many topics. Yes. Uh, she is a, a wonderful resource that we should utilize. More importantly, we should be supporting. Uh, she has her I things going on. Support her, support her, support her. Uh, we need more, more, more people like her on here. Uh, and thank all of you guys for coming on. Thanks for the questions. This to me, this is the best part. I love being interactive because I love learning. Uh, I love speaking to people. I love us exchanging, having the, the, you know the comments because if it's something that I thought maybe I was wrong about or I learned mm -hmm. something, I'm gonna go back and do the, the, the research. You know, I'm gonna find a book. Thank you for the books um, uh, that we've got uh, uh, to read that somebody gave us, as well as the movies. So I've got to check these movies out and get me a couple more uh, books as well. Yeah, that's one thing. Like, Willie's channel, Save the Saint, is about one topic, okay? My <laughs> channel is just all over the place. Like, people get on me, and it's like, you know, I'm thinking, well, not that I'm thinking, I'm kinda, I kind of know, you know, that's why, like, YouTube doesn't know who to advertise my channel to, which is great because I'm really not in it to be this, okay, I want to have a million subscribers, things like that. It'd be nice, it'd be great, but however those who have been solid with me, you know, I'm here for you. And if only one person tuned in, I'm going to give you everything I got, you know, quality content and stuff like that. So yeah, over here, talk about a little bit of everything. And because it's starting to warm up outside, I want to start vlogging more, exploring Georgia and shout out to everybody who's, you know, in Georgia want to visit and things like that. So you're going to see more as you know, the weather warms up different types of content, but this is, this is my foundation. You know, that first video I did it back in what 2016, or I think it was 16, you know, why I left Christianity. And that's where a lot, a lot of people found me. And for those who's been rocking with me, I haven't uploaded this kind of content in a while. So that's why I'm kind of hitting heavy with it now. Cause I'm like, I'm, I'm overdue. So I thank you for helping me get this content out and all the new connections that I've made. I really appreciate you. Yeah, someone said pollen in Georgia. Now, yeah, it is. I wear contact lenses, and so the pollen gets in my eye and it burns uh, me. I, other than that, it don't. I, I don't guess it. I still sneeze and stuff, but it's not that bad. It's just <laughs> getting to my contact lens, and it hurts and it's painful. So yeah, we a lot of pollen in Georgia. Oh, Check my my yeah. my Instagram stories. I wore this product called a Under the Weather Pod today. I ordered it last year. And it was because, like, I, I really hate wearing a mask. I really am. Y'all know I don't like the, the face panties. I have, you know, cystic <laughs> acne. So I don't like anything on my face because the breakouts are painful. And um, I wore it today because I had to go to the VA. And I'm like, make me put on face panties, take my temperature, all this stuff. So I put on my under the wet weather pod at the doors. I walked in and didn't tell me to put on the mask. I had on my pod. You, you'll, you'll see it in my story. And I may just upload a quick, quick video on it. But yeah, that keeps everything from blowing in your face and you're just protected. So it's your own personal bubble. I love it. Yeah, this has been great. Guys, this has been wonderful. Thank you guys yeah. so much. Uh, we'll have another topic next week. And, next um, week, next Wednesday. And so when is Easter? Is it what, three weeks, two weeks, three weeks? I don't know, because it changes every year. So uh, It does gonna... change every year. And I, since, since I stopped going to church in 20, 2015, I, I, don't, I don't keep a week. Well, so taxes anymore. done ca came out. Yeah, taxes yeah. are out. So the, the the suits and the candy is already in the store. So we'll yeah. we'll find out. But we have a great top topic in store. Um, one topic that I could think off top. What was it? We're gonna talk talk about that. The resurrection about, and Passover and all that. Oh yeah, yeah. we're gonna talk about we're gonna talk about that. You know, Jesus did not suffer for you, or Jesus did not suffer. 
You know, when you, when <laughs> that you, was Easter. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That, that, was, for, that was for Easter. That was for Easter. So that's that was gonna make a lot of people mad because yes. you know, our people they they you know they hear the Jesus story, the, the story of the, the passion story, and they break out in tears and, and flip over bitches and stuff. But you know, you talk to them about their their ancestors and what their 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 you know blood relatives went through mm -hmm. being enslaved and lynched and beat, not not one tear, not one, they don't shed one tear. So so we're gonna talk about who really died for you. That's right. Probably, that's Ooh, probably that's, should, I'll write uh, that one down. Yeah. Who really died for you? That's really how we should to phrase, uh, to phrase it. So absolutely. But uh, this has been good. We appreciate you guys. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm out. I'm done. I'm good. You pick yeah. up the book. Amazon. Oh, we didn't talk about it. Okay, really quick. You can pick up my book uh, on Amazon uh, from same to same. Uh, what is it? Uh, my journey of women Christianity <laughs> and why Christianity has been detrimental to the African American community. You can find it by that title, or you can find it by Willie O. Cartwright. You see the name? That's me. Uh, you can get it on Amazon. Uh, if you want me to autograph it, then you can send me a message and get it to get a message to me. I'll send you my cash app, and I will send you a signed copy uh, of it. I guess one day it, it, it'll be really, really, really big, and you will have a signed copy of it. Uh, but absolutely. But if, if not, then you can pick it up on Amazon. And I really appreciate you guys. Thank you so much. Thank you. Perfect. Guys. Thank all of you guys. We'll see y'all later. Have a see good one. Later.